Okay. Hello, everyone. So uh, let's raise your hands. Who wants to go to space? Okay, so this is the right audience to speak. Uh, so I want to shoot for the stars. Uh, somebody say you better shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you go to the stars. But really, uh, the meaning of uh, my talk, I would like to find the answer why Lithuania needs space. So if we go back to history and look uh, what we did in space as Lithuanians and for space, we really see that we had great people like uh, Kazimierz Simonowicz, who was the pioneer of rocketry. And uh, we also had the, the real Lithuanian cosmonaut who unfortunately did not uh, fulfill his dream and uh, died in, a cra in an accident uh, uh, during the air show, uh, Rimantas Stankiewicz. So we think about space that is something unreachable for Lithuanians. Yeah? We think like Lithuania does not deserve space. It's, it's unaffordable for us. But we always thought about space. We dreamed about it. And we there are thousands of Lithuanians who, uh, well, Lithuanian origin people who were lived in the uh, USA, in Russia, and other worlds who did really contributed very much to space exploration. But really, all these people did not identify themselves as uh, independent Lithuanian citizens. We didn't have people, we didn't have our objects in space that really were from Lithuania. Uh, so people usually think that, uh, and I used to think that, space is an unfulfilled dream for Lithuanians. And uh, I remember I was uh, studying in university and then suddenly in 2010, like uh, 20 years after almost 20 years after independence of all, uh, almost no activity in space exploration in Lithuania, there suddenly was a revival and uh, we expressed a wish to join the European uh, Space Association. So I thought, well, that's maybe a good thing, a new hope. But, you know, the real thing is that uh, but people were behind that and the people really uh, there were uh, really few people, but those people were kind of brave to set uh, ambitious goals. And uh, one of them was uh, uh, Sotus Lapienis, who, yes, maybe we can have our own satellite in space. And he really uh, posed a rhetorical question, when will we go up to space? Maybe 2011. And that was the revival of uh, small spacecraft. Uh, the small sats began to appear in space industry and they really were affordable. So, so everything looked fine, but you know, if you look to the society and uh, think about politicians talking about space, you always feel ashamed. And really, politicians uh, are afraid to use the word space, and uh, I don't have anything against Biruta Vesaita, but really, she was kind of a, uh, a good uh, politician, but was, uh, kind of showed that she has, uh, she has used the word feeling as a cosmonaut when she uh, just uh, didn't want to go. Uh, she was used a privately booked flight to Kazakhstan. But really, that's not, not the point. The point is that Lithuanian government did not want to put ambitious goals for Lithuania. And it's kind of a shame. And people don't believe them. So, you know, we thought... Okay, maybe that's good. That means that we can do it. Pure citizens, you know. We can change the, uh, the, the history of our country. So we thought, you know, maybe politicians are afraid to do that, but we, pure couple of young guys, we can do it. We, we are not afraid that people will say, hey, you are crazy, you know. Well, we don't care, you know. Uh, we are building our own future. So we just, uh, I had one <laughs> great friend. His name is Vitanis, and... Uh, we met in the university, and he was uh, one of those people who you have, all of you have some people who come to your life and leave something that changed it, you know. And really, we, we decided that we want to build the first Lithuanian satellite, and we, uh, we founded a company, uh, a nonprofit organization. We started to collect the funds. We, we wanted to participate in a scientific uh, uh, project, and to put a 
a 30 centimeter and 10 centimeter uh, satellite in orbit. And that was really kind of ambitious goal. And people liked that. Uh, people were writing this in the newspapers. And uh, ironically, the first we first uh, talked about this di idea in TEDx. That was in Konos Technology University two years ago. And uh, that was cool. So, but of course, that was also difficult. We were only, uh, at that time, we, me and Vitanis, we really didn't have money, but we still believed in our idea. And you know, those people who are very stubborn, they usually, they say that, uh, you know, uh, the, the really brave people, they have luckiness. So uh, we were brave and we were ma uh, a bit crazy. And uh, when people say, uh, you are kind of lucky that you went to NASA uh, to study, but really, I'm when I recall that, that was really easy. I don't know why, I just, uh, I just dreamed about that, but uh, that was our wish. And I think when people ask, how did you go there? Uh, how did you manage that? I think now that, I think there are only two of people at that moment pretty much crazy about space to go there. So uh, people called us uh, conquerors of space, but really what NASA offered us is not the space, but really everyday, uh, everyday work. That became, you know, everyday work. And uh, we really were kind of very happy about that, that we can every day go and do what we like and get paid for that. So we came to NASA Ames Research Center that is in Silicon Valley. And really uh, this uh, spirit of freedom that was governed there really helped us to to kind of think about new idea and uh, we didn't really have a wish to build our first satellite uh, but it happened to be that we met uh, Alex McDonald who is actually the most uh, guilty for that so Alex is a very great person he is uh, uh, protagonist of commercial space. He's good uh, history, histo historian of space. And uh, he happened to be in Lithuania for some time. Uh, and, uh, you know, he said he, we, we talked uh, with him in a winery and there was some very high-ranking high people from NASA there. And he asked us, so guys, what are you going to do here for your internship? And we said, okay, we will do some research in the engines. And I said, I will do some uh, research for the re-entry vehicles and all that science stuff. And he said, stop, you have to build your, f your, your first satellite of your country. Look to the Latvians, look to Estonians, they are building it. So you will be, you know, you cannot wait, you cannot snooze, you have to choose and do it. So that was really when we got this uh, idea to build our uh, first satellite, w really simply, very, very fast, uh, one year, and uh, we were lucky to have a very great teacher over there. He was Marcus Murbach, and uh, he was really the guy who inspired and supported us all those three months. And uh, he led us to uh, to work incrementally, step by step. You know, like uh, like Orem was told, those uh, four easy steps, you know, how you can reach your goals in life. So that was uh, something like this. <laughs> you know, think about first the budget, the organizational chart, the success criteria of your mission, the system block diagram. So it thinks, uh, looks like funny, but uh, that's really the where you start, you know, from uh, drinking uh, coffee with your teacher and thinking how you will build your satellite. So. After three months, we didn't have the satellite, but we had the team. And uh, that's uh, the great thing that we learned is that really team, bu team building is the key to success uh, almost all of the time, apart from your own persistence and perseverance. So uh, I think that uh, this is a great lesson that we learned. And we when we came back to Lithuania, uh, really met the, the great team that we assembled uh, while we were still at uh, USA. And uh, the satellite was almost built in Lithuania while we were at Ames. We were designing it and the guys were building it. So uh, 
you ask how we collect the people. We didn't have money, we didn't pay for them. But we actually, uh, it was their hobby, and this picture shows us. And uh, we also learned how to spread our ideas through media, you know. Uh, so we, th we knew that people are interested in our project, and we wanted that it would be you know, open source, that everybody could contribute, everybody would, uh, would be happy that we as a country are building our first satellite and going to space, and uh, we can change our history. So we also like not just to talk about it, but just build things and show how we build it. And uh, in the end, we built our satellite. That was pretty a challenge, but anyway, it's not the story I will tell, but uh, then there was a launch, of course, the very exciting moment from uh, the east coast of USA in Virginia. And uh, this is the picture from my friend Vitanis, who was uh, at that moment uh, overseeing the, the launch. And really, that was a great moment. And the good news was not the launch, but that the satellite worked, <laughs> of course. But, uh, you know, yeah, and, and what people really, what I noticed that uh, the, uh, you know, the, the media and the people really didn't uh, pay a lot of attention after launch. They were not really much interested uh, what is going on with the satellite in space. So we decided to, you know, just to work on and see what, would, what we can do with our satellite. And I want you to show a very short video about our achievements in space and one of the most important achievements. Retranslators, this is not just kita kaip radio stotis, kuri pagauna kitos mažos, mažytas radio stotis signala, jį sustiprina ir tokiu būdu persiunčia kitoms radio stotims. Tokiu būdu su paprasta maža radio stotelė galima susikalbėti, subendrauti su kitais korespondentais, kurie yra, na, tikrai palyginti ne, nemažu atstumu. Lituanikas atvienas e, balso retransliatorius buvo sukurtas dviejų žilvinų. E, jis suprojektavo e, žilvinas atkočiūnas iš e, Klaipėdos radio mėgės, kurio šaukinys LA Greg 2 SS e, sukūrė ir sukonstravo žilvinas batis iš elektrienų, kur šauginys LA Greg 3 H. Jisai yra ypatingas savo konstrukcija, tai yra stebėtinai didelis darbas buvo atliktas ir idėja retransliatorių į Lituaniką SAT vienas palydovą mes padidinome apriepti balsinio ryšio iki tūkstančių, iki kelių tūkstančių kilometrų. Tai nutiko vakar 2014 metų balandžio 22 dieną šiek tiek po pietų. Pirmas bandymas buvo tik tai kolega kūrėjas kalbėjo ir mes klausėmės. Antras bandymas buvo du kūrėjai klausėsi, tai yra žilvinas iš elektrienų, uh, užmesgė ryšį su kolega kitu žilvinu iš Klaipėdos ir mes, ir mes klausėmės, kaip vyksta ryšys. Ir trečios bandymas buvo atliktas jau su užsieniečiais. Su belgais, uh, belgas kalbėjosi su ispanų, ispanas kalbėjosi su uh, žmogumi iš Anglijos. Ir tai įrodė, kad ryšys tikrai geras ir galim tikrai pasidžiaugti, kad per mūsų palydovą ryšį užmesgė praktiškai visa Europa. Aš esu labai vis dar tokioje euforijoje, kad mes lietuviai, mes sukūrėme tą daiktą nuo nulio, iškėlėme į kosmosą ir jisai veikia ir jisai yra iš tikrųjų šiuo metu vienas iš viso labo dviejų tokių retransliatorių šiuo metu dirbančių kosmose. Numeris vienas, kuris jau kurį laiką ten skraido, yra Saudo Arabijos mokslininkų sukurtas retransliatorius ypatingo populiarumo na, įrenginys. Retai, kada išgirsim įtylinti eteriją, na, to tarpu galbūt dalis tų korespondentų persikels daryti ryšį į lietuviškai palydovą. Kokybės prasme 
Kokybės ir ryšio kiekybės prasme, tai yra labai vykęs eksperimentas, labai džiaugiamas ir iš tikrųjų gal netgi šiek tiek pranoko mūsų lūkesčius, kadangi tikrai buvo sėkmingai atliktas, o ryšio kokybės prasme ir balso perdavimo kokybės prasme, tai tikrai toks jausmas, kad kolegos, kurie naudojas yra transliatorinį ir per jį kalba, toks jausmas, kad sėdė į netolio ant ten ant stogo. Tikrai geros kokybės ryšys. Ateitis, na, ateitis nebent tinklas tokių retransliatorių, kuris apriepia visą pasaulį, konkurenciją mobiliam ryšiui galbūt, ir sukurti savo kažką dar, na, dar įstabesnio, kažką dar progresyvesnio ir kažkokių naujovių dar iškelti ir kosmose jas įjungti ir jomis naudoti. So, I'm really happy that we created actually not just a flying box, but a tool that everybody can use. And you think about radio amateurs that they are people who have fancy equipment, very expensive and know how to use it. But really, even ordinary people can use it. And this is the example of a Russian radio amateur who really almost built everything himself and used the satellite to communicate with his friends in Russia. So this is one point is that we can build tools that everybody could use internationally. And just uh, one example, how efficiently a 10 and 10 and cent centimeter box can be used. And uh, this uh, map shows the, the people who really reported the, the use of our satellite. And there's still hundreds of reports who didn't uh, really reach this. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, say, and I think the real value of our project is the is the educational value. And I started to, to attend schools and uh, various events and to talk children about our project. And I really saw in their eyes that they're really, really happy about that. They're really interested. They don't ask about how money did it cost, how much did it cost, you know, uh, why do we need it? They're happy about it. They are interested. And they see that we, as Lithuanians, can set ambitious goals for us and they really then see the they are proud of their country, of their nation. So in the end, I would like to say that the most critical tool for solving humanity's grand challenges is not the is the committed, passionate human mind. And this is the the quote from Peter Diamantis. And I think that we are living in really exciting moment when the human race is setting their foot uh, uh, on the other worlds and leaving our earth and I think we have to choose and to, to go together with humanity and not to snooze. Thank you. <laughs>